Hey folks, Lemonade here, and today we finally get to look at the long-awaited Honage Stormbreaker, a mouse with a lot of hype from a company that has had hit or miss releases over the last few years. Is this one another miss? Well, we're going to get into it right after this. Small disclaimer before we begin, Ponage did send me this free for review, but that never changes the outcome of any review on this channel. My opinions are my own, and you are seeing this as early as they are. All right, we're going to knock out the specs per usual, and I'll put those right up here for you folks. Now let's get into what a lot of people want to know right away. Is the QC good on this thing, and is the 2K polling rate real 2K? There were concerns for many that Ponage would have worse QC than Final Mouse, and that they wouldn't be able to do high polling rate well. And it's kind of justifiable because this is the first time that Ponage is doing a magnesium mouse and the first time they're exploring high polling rates. And you were all wrong. Delay after delay and sometimes bare minimum communication from Ponage was frustrating, but it was clearly worth it. Starting with the QC of the mouse, there's just absolutely no creaking, no side flex or rattling anywhere. And compared to my final mouse, it's just better. My final mouse has a kind of wonky scroll wheel and side flex that still isn't great to this day, even after I opened it up and attempted to fix these issues. But it's not all perfect. Two things that I did notice on this mouse, and of course this could be just my copy, but I gotta report it. First off, there is flex at the bottom, specifically around this point down here, as you can see up in the close up now. I could definitely snap it with ease if I wanted to. The bottom of these magnesium mice has to be non-metal, so some sort of plastic. That way it doesn't interfere with the signal to the receiver. Is this concerning though in real world use? No, it's just something to note because you are going to be hitting this area for the on off switch quite often. The other and probably more annoying issue is that there is some switch grinding unfortunately. And let me just show you. So it's gonna be that tinny scratching sound of the magnesium mouse clicks along the top of the switch. It's not something that is obviously gonna come out each time as what I just showed you is exaggerated just for the sake of the video, but you're going to feel it and hear it from time to time. Final Mouse did their implementation a little better in this respect and they are both using Omron 20Ms. Now quick note on the overall switch feel itself. Um, I think they're incredible. They're just really tactile, super snappy on all the buttons, not just mouse one and two. The scroll wheel is light to actuate as well and has nicely defined steps. Take a listen. Okay, but what about that 2K polling rate? Well, it's actually legit, and there is no but coming after my statement. By the way, 4K polling rate is coming and confirmed. It's just going to be sometime after launch, but I'm going to touch on that in a little bit. And as you can see here, the polling rate held a consistent 2000 Hertz when saturated. And I also confirmed this in mouse tester where the spread was nice and tight, and it locked in right about 0.5 milliseconds on the update time. I also tested sensor drift on a glass mouse pad to see if there was any issues there, and it held a firm position for the 30 second test. There also was a firmware update during the review period that fixed some of the issues other reviewers had, but my copy on version 114 and even this newer version 115 performed equally as well. Now in terms of the overall software experience, it's very light, sitting in at about 18 megabytes in the background, and the UI is clean and intuitive. You have all the things you would need except one, you cannot change the debounce time. Luckily for performance enthusiasts, I did confirm with Ponage that the debounce is set to zero milliseconds by default so they can achieve their advertised average 0.6 millisecond click latency. And after many hours of use in aim trainers and in game, I followed back up with some double clicking tests of over 300 clicks on each of these switches and nothing came up. I do want to mention one thing, there is a setting for slam click prevention as you saw. So yes, this mouse can register clicks on slam, something even just like this is going to register slam or like this, same thing, it's going to register a click. If you enable slam click prevention, it does add an 8 millisecond buffer on a liftoff for that first click. 
or it will choose to reset to zero milliseconds depending on the time between the lift, the detection, and the click itself. And I did check with Ponage and they let me know that Logitech and Razer have similar algorithms on their mice, but you cannot disable theirs. Ponage is most similar to Logitech and how they do it. Uh, Razer, on the other hand, uses an eight millisecond buffer through the entire process. It doesn't reset to zero like these two. Regardless though, it's a win for Ponage from an enthusiast perspective because they actually allow you to disable this feature. Oh, and I almost forgot, you can actually set the polling rate, your DPI, and the liftoff distance all on the mouse through button click combos if you do not want to use the software. Now in terms of packaging, so you know what to expect, it comes in this very sleek kind of watch style box that opens up like this. Inside it's fairly minimal though, you're going to get a decent USB-C cable, this badass looking pyramid receiver. By the way, that there is no dongle, it's just built directly into the receiver itself. A keychain screwdriver, more on this a little bit later, and a set of really high quality grip tape. It's paper thin like core pads, so it's not gonna add any unnecessary thickness to the mouse. Now let's talk about the coating itself. I put the grip tape on literally just a little bit ago to test it out and feel it. But the past week of testing, I've been using the mouse without grip tape. I really love the feeling of raw magnesium. Plus for me, I use fingertip grip. So these sides here kind of give me areas to dig my fingers in and lock them in. It also makes it feel just a little bit slightly thinner because you get that extra depth of moving your fingers into the mouse through the cutouts. And I know people are probably wondering, do the sides cut into your fingers? No, they don't. They go through several machine and hand polishing processes, so it's smooth. These skates themselves are really solid, so you won't be needing to buy third party. Good rounding as well overall, uh, but they do have this really thin clear film on them, so remember to move that before use. Battery life on 2K polling has been super solid. I think I charged it twice, maybe during the testing over the past like six days, uh, but it did come out of the box at like 70%. And speaking on 2K, I did mention earlier that the 4K is coming, so let's chat about that. First off, I think it's a smart move. While I don't personally care or frankly benefit from 4K because of my setup, the sensor and the MCU here are fully capable of it and for high level gamers, they can benefit from this, so why not include it? Overall, good move bonage. That said, just like their marketing materials say, 4K does come with caveats that most normal gamers would probably want to avoid. It can have issues in certain games and cause stutters and jitters. It's gonna eat at your battery life even more heavily. It's more taxing on lower end CPUs and the performance difference is really small and hardly perceivable by most gamers. And speaking on the sensor, and as you saw in the box, the screwdriver and the screws in the back, yeah, you can move the entire sensor up and down. That's incredibly unique. The only other mouse that can do this was Ponage's very own Ambi from last year. But a lot of people, myself included, kind of wrote it off as a, just another gimmick. But I'm glad I took time to dig into this. Not only did I play with this in all the various positions that I could find, I did read through the entire research study that they based this on. Side note, huge credit to Ponage for citing real research in regards to their decision process on making the product and choosing what they chose. Not only do we have that study on the movable sensors, but also this separate study that they use to determine their choice for polling rate in mice. So what did I find? We are definitely gonna notice the difference in moving this sensor up and down, more so than you would 2000 versus 4000 polling rate, or a click latency difference between these switches and Razer's optical switches. So if you're a performance chunky, you should be happy that this is on a mouse like the other tech I just mentioned. Also, for what it's worth, like I said, I adjusted this many times up and down along the rails and there's no sign of wear, so it should hold up fairly well over time. I do recommend just don't tighten these very tightly, just enough where they stop and maybe like a quarter turn after that. Now, when you look at this picture at first glance, it looks like you're moving a further distance when the sensor position is at the top, which is the yellow line. And if you have a lower sensor position, the distance is shorter but it's a bit deceiving if you just look at the picture. For example, I'm using currently a 33 centimeter 360, meaning it takes 33 centimeters to complete a full 360 in game. That though does not change when I move the sensor up or down on the mouse. It still clocks in a full 33 centimeters to complete a full 360. 
but when the sensor is at the top of the mouse, because the path from where you start and end your swipe is further away, the sensation you feel is that the sensor is faster. It has to close a further distance to achieve the same 33 centimeter, thus it feels faster. And on the opposite end, when you throw the sensor at the bottom, the sensation is slower or more controlled as it closes the same gap to 33 centimeters. So it really opens up unique possibilities to dial in how a certain 360 will feel depending on what a user prefers and wants to achieve. A more sped up and electric feeling 33 centimeter like it's right under your fingertips or a more smoothed out and magnetic 33 centimeter that brings back some stability. Some things that I want to note when I was looking at the study. The test mouse that they used had a sensor range of 72 millimeters, which brought it from 0% at the very top to 100% at the very bottom of the mouse. But Ponage's movable sensor area is much smaller. It only measures at about 25 millimeters from top to bottom. Why is that? Well, on average, the users that they tested fell into a center position preference and in their performance, so that 50% mark. Obviously, as you see, users preferred at differing levels of higher or lower position, but it didn't stray very far from the middle. So smartly, Ponage just narrowed that gap of adjustment to keep users near the peak level of performance regardless of what position they prefer. As you see, going too far, as in this example, creates issues of path deviation, like when at the extremes at the very top of the sensor position or at the very bottom of the sensor position. Also, if people are wondering, vertical movement was apparently not affected by sensor position as shown here. The yellow is vertical and the green is horizontal movement. Lastly, we're gonna get into shape and my final thoughts. I think they nailed the overall shape and should be comfortable for a lot of people. It's not too big, it's not too small. And as you can see in these examples, you know, it's bigger than my Prime Mini and the X-Lite Mini that I tested before, but a bit more tapered than that OG X-Lite and the Zowie EC2. It's a little bit bigger than the EC3, but it also tapers on the right side a bit better. And it has a fairly steep and aggressive slope from the center line down to the end of the button clicks. And even for me in fingertip, the way that the thumb groove is aggressively tapered really helps keep it pretty narrow down here. And again, those added side cutouts allow me to get a more comfortable hold and grip over something that's more rounded and smooth, especially on this side. Now, I still prefer my Prime Mini overall, just purely based on its smaller footprint and its very tapered, more kind of straight edged approach to an Ergo, but this comes very close. One thing that I didn't really like on the Ponage was the placement of these side buttons, at least again for fingertip. At first, I didn't really mind it because I was just setting my grip point to right below the side buttons as I normally do, but naturally as I was using it, my fingers kind of just attached to the more narrow bottom portion of the mouse down here. And of course that made the side buttons really far to reach for me. That all said, for claw or palm grips, the size and placement really shouldn't be an issue at all. And in terms of the Rocket Jump Ninja size to weight ratio, this comes in at a 0.71 to one. It really is just effortless to move. One thing to note though, sensor placement will affect the weight balancing a touch just depending on which direction you choose. At the end of the day, yeah, this mouse is still 170 or 180 bucks, but honestly, it is fairly priced. And when we're comparing this to Zowie's wireless offerings at 150 and Razer's 4K bundle at 180, it's the only Ergo that's magnesium and in this weight class. It has the latest tech with 4K coming in intricate design and limited edition colors and adjustable sensor and pretty thoughtful reasoning for their choices and development. Honestly, if you love Ergo, this can easily be endgame for you and should be at the very top of your list. And on that note, folks, all my socials are down below along with the affiliate links for the brands that I trust and use on a daily basis, just like Ponage. Use code LEMONADE for any peripherals to save a few bucks or code Upgrade Lemonade to sign up with our channel partner Surfshark to get an extra three months free. If you had a good time with me today, likes and subs are always appreciated. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this mouse. But until the next Fresh Squeeze video, stay thirsty, folks.